Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, I've been absent for a couple of weeks. I missed two weeks of videos because I've been so tied up around here and I do apologize about that, but I'm back today and hopefully I can make up for it. Uh, I've got a great little project for you. We're going to be making a couple of little lift lid boxes that are just, you know, with all the little details, they're just a great little gift to make for someone. And they're such an easy project to make that you can make not only one, two, or a dozen at a time by simply making all the cuts for all of your pieces while you have your machine set up. And these little boxes have are made with spalted pecan, white oak, mahogany. They've got a fitted lid that lifts right off and it stays into place and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but this is a great little project to do for the weekend. Uh, it took me a day to make these two because of filming and everything, but you could really knock out a bunch of them at one time by, like I said, making repeated cuts on all your pieces while you have your settings set on your machines. All right, guys. Well, that's enough about that. I do apologize about being away. I'm here now, so let's get started. All right, guys. For these little lift lid keepsake boxes, they're real tiny little keepsake boxes. Uh, I'm going to use some of the white oak that I have left over from a recent project uh, shower bench that I just made. Um, I'm going to use some spalted pecan, and I'm going to use a little bit of mahogany, and I'll use the mahogany for kind of like the accent splines uh, for the corners of the box. Let's take a closer look at the wood and then we'll get started into making it. I'm going to be making two keepsake boxes. These little projects like this are something that you can make multiples of at one time and while you have everything set up on your saws or your machines you might as well cut all the pieces at once for however many you want to make. For this particular video I'm going to make two of them uh, and they're going to sort of kind of be the same. They're, they're both going to, the sides are going to be made out of the white oak. The lid is going to be made out of the three-quarter inch spalted pecan that I have and then the splines I'm going to use the mahogany like I said so they'll both be kind of identical um, but you can raise your scrap bin and that's what I did I pulled these out of the scrap bin you can raise your scrap bin and, and you can mix and match and, and, and do whatever you want to make some variations on the boxes but uh, it's a real quick and simple project so let's take a look at what we're going to use and then get started so for the sides of the box like I said I'm going to use some of this white oak uh, and I've already planed it down to 3 8 inches thick uh, that's how thick the sides of our box are going to be uh, and they're going to be about two and a quarter inches uh, tall uh, should I say two and a quarter inches high and then we're going to cut our miters and everything and, and I'll give you the dimensions on the length they're around three three and a half inches um, I'm also going to use some of this spalted pecan uh, it's got a lot of nice color and figure in it uh, and it's going to be out of a three quarter inch piece and I'll show you what we're going to do with the lid for that because it's just a simple lift lid box and for the splines I've already planed down some mahogany uh, to some a uh, little bit more than an eighth of an inch about a, a kerf width of the blade and uh, we're going to use that for the splines so let's get set up and let's get started Okay guys, over here at the table saw, I'm going to use my sled uh, that allows me to cut 45 degree cuts. Uh, but you can use your miter gauge on your table saw with your blade tilted to 45 degrees. You can use your miter saw if you'd like. This just happens to be the method I use because I happen to have this sled. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting these box sides using a continuous grain method uh, to where the grain is continuous on all four sides of the box. And in order to do that, as I cut my piece, I will be flipping my stock over and making cuts. And I'll get closer so you can see what I'm doing. But that way it will allow all four pieces to run in a continuous grain all the way around the box. And it just has a nice little look to it. So let's get closer and let me show you what I'm doing. Alright guys, a quick walkthrough uh, on how I'm going to do this. And I'm going to use a scrap piece as an example. But the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make my first miter cut. From there I'm going to flip the piece, slide it up to my stop block and make my second cut. And I'm going to continue that for all four pieces. And that will allow the grain to run continuously all the way around all four sides of the box. So let's get our white oak stock and get started. Now 
Now for both of these boxes, I've got all four pieces cut and I want to keep track on the order that I cut them so I can make sure that the grain runs continuously. So from the top down, I'm just going to number these backwards. So it will be four, three, two, and one. Same thing over here. Also, I want to keep track of what's the top and what's the bottom. So for now, I'm just going to put a little mark on the top of these pieces so I know which is the top and which is the bottom. All right. So as you can see, and you might not be able to see very well on the camera, but by using this method, it gives us a continuous grain on all four sides. And it just allows for a nice little detail in the box. Since these are small boxes, the more little detail that you can give them, the more attractive they are. So now with our cuts and our sides made, we need to go ahead and start working on making the kerf cut for the bottom of our box. And get those pieces together so we can go ahead and glue these up and then start working on the lid. Before we move to the next step, let me clarify one thing for you. Each of our side pieces were cut to 3 inches in length. I know I had mentioned to you that they were two and a quarter inches tall, but each side piece was cut to three inches in length. So now over here at the table saw, I've got the fence and blade set up to go ahead and cut the grooves in the bottom of each one of these side pieces that will accept the bottom panel. And the setup is this. I've got the blade height set up to where we're going to be cutting a three sixteenths of an inch deep groove. About an eighth inch wide, which is pretty close to about the width of a blade curve. And the fence is set up so that that groove is located a quarter inch in from the bottom of each piece. So with everything set up, let's go ahead and make our cuts. Okay, the next two steps of this process is a little bit fussy because you want to get a nice fit. We're cutting the bottom of the boxes now. And basically what I did is I pre-assembled one of the boxes with a couple of rubber bands just to hold it together. And remember our little groove in there is 3 sixteenths of an inch deep, so we need to add that measurement in. So what I did is I uh, measured the inside, both directions. Added that 3 eighths of an inch uh, to account for the depth of the grooves. And our piece, or my piece, is going to be about two and nine sixteenths by two and nine sixteenths. Now we're going to go ahead and cut each piece, and then the next step is kind of the fussy part. It's cutting the little uh, rabbit around all four sides so that we get a nice fit in there. And I'll show you that step. But if you want, you can take some scrap piece, and I'm just using plywood. I'm using Baltic birch quarter inch plywood for the bottoms. You can use hardwood or what have you, uh, you know, quarter inch hardwood if you'd like. But for these simple boxes, quarter inch plywood will do just fine. I'm going to go ahead and get my pieces cut, and then we'll move over to the next step, which is cutting that little rabbit around all four sides. And I'll show you why you want a nice fit and why it's a little bit fussy. Okay, on this blade, I've got the height set up that is about 3 sixteenths of an inch deep, the same depth as the little groove uh, on our side pieces. And what we want to do is cut a very small little rabbit on all four sides of our bottom piece. So that way, when it fits in, you've got a nice little bottom all the way around so that's why I said it's a little fussy we're gonna you know you want to make some practice cuts or, or, or what have you get all four sides and you may need to sneak up on the actual size like I said mine is uh, cut right now to two and nine sixteenths to two and nine sixteenths this piece here 
but once I get my little rabbits cut, and you probably won't be able to see that very well, but once I get those little rabbits cut and get them into this box, if I have to trim anything down, I'm going to go ahead and do that so I know that I have a nice fit all the way around all four sides of this. Okay, wasn't that the ugliest thing you ever seen? <laughs> but this is just to show you that my bottom piece is oversized. Uh, 2 and 9 16 by 2 and 9 16 is not the right size. It's a little bit too big. Uh, and that's what I said. I'm sneaking up on it. I got all these gaps on my miters. My box won't close up because of this piece being so big. But if you notice, my grooves, I've got a really nice fit on all of my grooves. Uh, and the that tells me that my blade height and my little stop block here are set perfectly. I don't need to change them. What I need to change is the actual size of my bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and get my two bottoms cut down, recut the rabbits, and hopefully second time is a charm and we'll have a nice tight and right box. Okay guys, with the bottom cut down to the correct size, now you can see that everything is nice and tight in there. The miters are all closed on all four corners and I've got a nice fit on that bottom panel. Uh, the bottom panel ended up for me being 2 and 17 30 seconds by 2 and 17 30 seconds. So I only had a little bit I needed to trim off from that 2 and 9 16 by 2 and 9 16. Um, but that little bit made all the difference in the world. So now with this done we can go ahead and glue up our boxes. Okay guys for the next step on these boxes I've got them glued up and I've got some rubber bands around them uh, just to provide a little bit of clamping pressure and I got them set aside while the glue dries. Now for something that small you can use just rubber bands or some blue tape or uh, anything just to provide a little bit of cl uh, clamping pressure uh, on those joints. Now the next step we're going to do when the glue dries and everything we're going to be cutting miter spline slots in the corners of each one of those boxes. So we're going to make a real quick jig for that and in order to make this jig all you need is a piece of scrap plywood. You can use half inch, quarter inch, three quarter inch. I'm using a piece of three quarter inch plywood and I've got it uh, ripped down to three and a half inches wide. I've got a piece of 2x4 here, scrap 2x4 here that's uh, about uh, 12 inches long and I've got my miter gauge on the saw set up uh, at a 45 degree angle and we're going to just uh, cut a 45 degree in this 2x4 right down the middle. Now with that done, we're just going to take those two pieces of 2x4 and uh, glue them onto this piece of plywood end to end. So our jig looks like this. With the two pieces of 2x4 clamped to the piece of plywood, let that glue dry for a little bit and that should give you a nice area for these boxes to sit in. We can run this jig up against the fence and it will allow us to cut those splines in it. So quick and simple. We'll set it aside and then we'll use it in the next step. So now while the glue is drying on our jig and our boxes, let's take a minute and let me show you something else I'm working on. I've got a couple of projects coming up that requires me to ebonize some wood and rather than spending the money on purchasing ebony, I'm just going to use a simple recipe provided by George Von Driska and the Woodworkers Guild of America, uh, which creates an iron acetate uh, and you use that to react with the tannins in the wood, specifically uh, good woods for this are oak, walnut, and cherry. Um, this iron acetate will react with the tannins in those woods and create an ebony. Uh, it will blacken the wood in a nice opaque color um, and give you that ebony look without the expense. Um, and all you need for that is some steel wool and some vinegar in a glass jar. Uh, the steel wool you want to wash with some soap and water get all the oils off of it uh, otherwise it may not react with the vinegar. Uh, once you do that go ahead and place it in your jar and pour the vinegar on top. Let it sit for a day or two, a week even better. Um, 
if you need to hurry up the process and you need it right away, you can uh, use a double boil method and heat the solution to speed up the process. But I think you guys would be beneficial for you to stop by the WWGOA website, check out the recipe uh, under Ebonizing Wood, and I'll leave the link down in the description, uh, as well as you can click this link here and watch a video of George explaining to you this method. It's a great method. Uh, it's easy to do. You can create the iron acetate right in your shop, and um, you can use it to create a beautiful ebonized wood without the expense. Okay guys, with the boxes glued up, we are ready to cut some slots in each corner to accept a couple of uh, splines. Now these splines are not only decorative, but they're going to help reinforce these miter joints. So let's get set up on the table saw using the new jig that we just made. Okay, over here at the table saw, we're going to go ahead and use our little jig that we made um, earlier to cut these little slots for the splines. Now, from the top of the box, the first spline I want to be about a half inch down, and then a quarter inch from that spline, I want to go ahead and put the second one, and I'm not going to cut the second one as deep. So what I've got, like I said, I used a three quarter inch piece of uh, plywood for my backing, and I've got the two by four on here. So from that three quarter inches, I want to go ahead and zero out my fence uh, with this jig up against it. And I need to account for the thickness of my base. And like I said, I have a three quarter inch base. So you need to do it for whatever thickness base you use um, on that piece of plywood. But I left a little piece of plywood sticking out here. So all I have to do is just put it up against the fence. And I know my I'm zeroed out basically. And from there, I can go ahead and move back to where I want to cut my first slot, which is a half inch. And that should be on my fence setting a total of an inch and a quarter back from the blade. And I've already got a slot pre-cut in mind, so I knew where to set the fence up. Now as far as the blade height, the first blade height for the first cut is going to be about three eighths of an inch high. Then when we move the fence back for the second cut, we're going to lower the blade by about an eighth of an inch. With everything set, now I'm going to take my box with the top facing in towards the fence, I'm going to go ahead and set it into place. I'm going to make sure that I hold the box securely as I push it through because I don't want the box to move at all because that will create uh, a wide or, or uneven slot. You'll end up with a poor looking uh, you know, spline in there. So keep everything nice and firm as you pass it through. So let's go ahead and make the first cuts. What you should end up with is nicely cut splines on all four sides of each box. And now we want to go ahead and move the fence back by a quarter of an inch. And we're going to lower the blade by an eighth of an inch. With that set, we can go ahead and make our cuts. Now the first cut I'm going to make is just to cut the slot in the jig. I'm not going to put the box in there just yet. So now that's going to give us a nice little detail on these splines and everything. We're going to have one little bit larger spline than the smaller one where we lowered the blade on the bottom. And it's just going to give these little boxes that extra added detail. Um, and that's real important. So as I said, you know, our first detail was the continuous grain on these small boxes. Our second detail is going to be these contrasting, uh, you know, splines and then the contrasting lid which I'm going to be using that spalter pecan. So all this little, these little details help out a lot to really make a box like this pop. Alright guys, to cut these splines we're going to make another little jig uh, that will make cutting the little splines out uh, pretty simple. And you can hang on to this jig and use it for future splines that you need to make. I've got a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood, uh, same part of the one that I made the other jig out of. It's about nine inches long, three and a half inches wide. Got a piece of three quarter inch stock uh, that is about nine inches long, and I would say probably about an inch wide, you know, inch, inch, quarter, doesn't matter. You can just make it as wide as you want. 
and I've got another piece of scrap pine here that I've got marked from nine inches. I'm gonna cut a miter on it. So I'm using my miter gauge set to 45 degrees and we're gonna go ahead and make that cut. 